Hey guys, Bugcat7 here. Okay, it is Monday, August 19, 2019, and I want to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And if you would kindly click that like button, guys, that would be so very good of you. Thank you very much ahead of time. All right, well, in this video, we are going to talk about the Black Sea Giants. And if you didn't know they were Black Sea Giants, well, you're going to find out about at least one of them today. But uh, you're going to be awfully angry after you hear what I read to you. But as you know from my previous video and the research done by Brian Forster with the um, Paracas mummies um, and the elongated skulls there, um, did the research and found out they were related to the Black Sea elongated skulls. So we find these elongated skulls around the Black Sea area. It seems to be a concentration of them there. And there are also, um, if you didn't know, giants found there as well. So we're going to cover that today. And, you know, if you didn't know and you're a new subscriber, I did a uh, video about uh, my appearance on Coast to Coast with Dr. Ken Fader, um, who is a writer, author, professor at, I believe, Connecticut University. And um, he is, you know, written about hoaxes in the past, one of them being the Cardiff Giant. And when I spoke to him on Coast to Coast, I sort of challenged him on it based on my video, Prove It, because what these people actually know is, you know, very little, because 95% of their research is theoretical, hypothetical. And, you know, I go over in this video, unfortunately, we have this third party of people who don't realize that the mainstream research is 90%, 95% hypothetical and theoretical. They don't know that. So, you know, they want to take it as proof positive, and it's not. And, you know, look, let me just play a little bit of the video. You can hear what I say in it. Okay. Probably, probably, and we suspect... Mm, they suspect they're great detectives. Okay, so I mean, you know, interpret, you know, I mean, look, guys, you know, if you or I in the alternative community use words like probably, seems to have, possibly, maybe, suggest, uh, inferred, blah, 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 people would be calling us out on all of this stuff. So, here you go, here's your state-approved stuff here, you know, and look, I, you know, that's okay, you know, I mean, that's, you know, my stuff is theoretical, my stuff is hypothesis, just like their stuff is, you know, the thing is, is that you want to take it as fact, it's not fact, it's probable, it's possible, it may seem, it's inferred, it's, you know, all of this stuff language that they use in here so you know they're not sure of a lot of this stuff and that's the whole point of this video here they're not sure of a lot of this stuff so this is what you're going by this is what you're forcing up my rear end here so before you start foaming at the mouth like a rabbit gopher and stomping around like Rumpelstiltskin with steam coming out of your ass okay Maybe you want to check the actual data, the actual material that you're so sure of that's proof of something else or whatever it is, okay? So before you start getting on me about how I got to prove this and prove that, you prove it, okay? You prove what you know, okay? Here's a guy who's the archaeologist, okay, that did the work, all right? And, you know, it may seem, and it's probably this, and it's like that, and maybe it's this, and maybe it's that. You know, look, this is not proof. This is, uh, you know, interpretation, okay? So, you know, okay, so you want to say, you know, these guys are... So anyway, I, that's what I went over with Ken Fader there, and, you know, we were talking about the Giants in that video, but... If you haven't seen this video of mine, this is a pretty important video of mine. And here you can see me go over some stuff in here. Let me see if I can get to it. Uh, let's see if this is it right here. Extremely interesting. 
Another notable feature of some early and mid middle woodland cultures is the relatively larger size of many of the articles. There are, for example, enormous carved antler combs ranging up to 14 inches in length. Okay? 14 inches in length. Large engraved bone daggers, massive harpoons, and extremely long stone blades, all of which suggest an, en an energetic people imbued with the definite... Okay, so in any case, the thing is there is the whole point of this, and what I was going through with Vader, Dr. Vader there, was that this is actual research done by the head archaeologist of New York State, okay? And, you know, it may be this, it's probably that. You get the gist of what it is. It's, you know, 95% hypothetical, all right? And here he did some actual research where he found these oversized items and repeatedly, not in just one dig or anything like that. He found them repeatedly, yet... No skeletons were found. So no skeletons were found. I have no idea how big these people were or anything like that. So to, to make the statement that these things were just votive, okay, is not particularly scientific, okay? Because you don't have skeletons from the time period. So how can you tell how big these people were or not? If they could handle these things or not. So... I went through that, and if you haven't seen this video of mine, this is a pretty important video, uh, prove it, okay? And I think you should take a look at that. I go through some pretty important things on there, and the whole explanation of this whole thing with, you know, I have to prove that there are giants or large hominids, as I like to call them, because that whole giant thing is just bad, okay? It's the whole, you know, we hate religion, and, you know, the people who are religious say, well, that proves it, but it doesn't prove the Bible. It doesn't, you need a whole lot of other stuff to prove that, and I don't care. We're not engaged in that topic on this channel, okay? It's just simply from a scientific viewpoint. There's lots of stories besides the Bible all over the world about giants. Does anybody talk about that and proving that? That proves that? Nobody cares about that. It's just the Bible, Bible, Bible. I hate it, and they love it, and whatever the heck it is. I don't care. All right? Well, let's take a look at this Black Sea giant thing and try to take it to you quickly here. But, you know, I would love to um, prove it to Dr. Ken Fader. But, unfortunately, these unfortunate things keep on happening over and over again. And here we're going to talk about it here in this article here, okay? So, this is Ancient Origins 2014. An exploration in the existence of giants in the Georgian Caucasus. That's the Black Sea area, folks. In early June 2014, a team of four Georgian researchers led a production crew from the Science Channel Cable Network into the Borjormi Karagali National Park. Their remit was to gather key footage for an episode of the Science Channel's flagship cable show, The Unexplained Files. The episode would be about the legendary ancient giant humans. Not the large hominids, the ancient giant humans. So, you know, you got channels like the Science Channel. I don't think they're advocating for these kind of things. I think they just allow people to come on and hope that they look stupid so they can say, oh, good, they made themselves look like fools. Okay? But <clears throat> with this one, it seems a little bit more serious. I don't know. But in any case, it's too late. They screwed this up. For anyone unfamiliar with this show, credited with being the most popular Science Channel series of 2013, it has the following mission directive. It aims to analyze historical events and scientific phenomena by using interviews with scientists academic researchers, and reliable eyewitness accounts. Oh, yippee. Okay, this filming project was a follow-up to an expedition back in 2008. Okay, so in 2008, they did this expedition there, all right, and they actually found large hominid bones, but, you know, look, as usual, something happened, so let's keep going here. All right. 
This filming project was a follow-up to an expedition back in 2008 when the same group of Georgian researchers had hiked into the wilderness of this huge park to investigate an ancient ruin located high up in the Lesser Caucasus mountain range. Their goal back then had been to follow up on a story about a giant's burial chamber that had apparently been stumbled upon by farmers passing through this remote location. It would seem the farmer had entered an ancient stone crypt adjoining a ruined structure only to discover two giant-sized human skeletons perched on chairs either side of, of at a large table. Exactly when this find occurred is not known, but it was many years previous to 2008. So who knows when they found this thing. And by the time I went back there, there was no chamber, just all caved in. Okay. Let me get into it, folks. Hold on a second. All right, so when the Georgian researchers reached the site, which is difficult to approach, they found the ancient ruined structure and the nearby crypt-like chamber. In 2008, the crypt roof had already collapsed and the chamber was now filled with blocks, soil, and other debris. The giants were not evident. A shallow dig carried out in one corner of the rectangular space revealed a significant cache of very aged bones. The bones appeared to be human, yet some of them seemed too far too, seemed far too large for a normal modern human. Okay, far too large for a normal modern human. And there's a picture of the bones. Okay, some leg bones there, femur and uh, skull appears with a very prominent jaw, which is also something that the elongated skulls, uh, you know, remains showed. Again, different phenotype, but, you know, not allowed to say that. Okay. The team collected some bones for testing and then returned to the Georgian capital, Tbilisi. There they presented these bones to the respected Georgian scientist, Professor Vakua. Okay, so respected guy. Best known for his discovery of his 1.8 million year old remains of Homo erectus georgicus, whatever the heck that thing was. His reported opinion stated that if the bones were human, they would be consistent with a person of around 2.5 meters in height. So that's pretty big, uh, six foot eight or, well, you know, something like that, approaching seven foot, okay? Unfortunately, dig this part of it. So here you go, folks. I hate to tell you this, but even today, it's just... We're never going to get to the truth, folks. Unfortunately, before any final conclusions were reached or full testing could be done, Vakua sadly died, and the bones were lost, lost, somewhere in a Georgian Museum's archive, in amongst thousands of other pieces and bones. Oh, really? Huh. Wow, that's something. You know, something important is this, this is a very famous guy, and, you know, they just lost him in there, huh, you know, where are they, I don't know, I, I you know, there's a lot of bones here and stuff, I don't know. There is some controversy over Vakua's statements. It has been suggested he may have been misquoted or mistranslated. Okay, so when you don't like when what somebody says, what happens is, is you get misquoted or mistranslated, say. That's what happens to you, you know, when you don't like religion and you hate giants and all, all of a sudden you get misquoted and mistranslated. Of course, the guy's dead. He can't defend himself. So, you know, hey, it's all okay. And why is this unusual? A lot of people say, well, what's the big deal? So a guy's like 6'8", 6'9", whatever it is, okay? Well, there's a problem with that. Okay, so if you don't know from previous videos that I've done on the large hominids or giants, if you like to call them that, okay, let me just read you this here from the history of human height. All right, in 150 years since the mid-19th century, the average human height in industrialized countries has increased 
up to 10 centimeters, 3.9 inches. However, and as the average height of human beings worldwide today is 5 foot 7 inches tall, 7 and a half inches tall or something like that, okay? So that's worldwide. All right. However, these increases appear to have largely leveled off. Well, why have they leveled off? According to Darwin, it should just be growing, growing, growing. We have the nutrition. We got plenty of food. We got medicine and health and all this kind of stuff like that. What happened with your theory there, jerk? Before the mid-19th century, there were cycles in height with periods of increase and decrease. And they're like, see, see, see the periods of increase? Nope. However, examinations of the skeletons show no significant differences in height from the Stone Age to the early 1800s. Okay, you see that right there. Okay, no significant differences in height. So how big were these fellas back then? Oh boy, they were real big guys. Let's see. Uh, late 19th century, the Netherlands was a land renowned for its short population. We'll look at that in a little bit. But now they're tall. But today, Dutch people are among the tallest, with young men averaging 183.8 centimeters, 6 feet 4 inches tall. It's pretty big. When you consider the average worldwide height, average height is 5'7". Okay, so... According to this, these fellows here, in the first half of the industry, the average height of an English male was 165 centimeters, 5 foot 5. And the average height of an Irish male was 5 foot 6, 168 centimeters. The estimated mean height of English, German, and Scottish soldiers was 163.6 centimeters, 165.9 centimeters, 5 foot 4.4 inches tall, 5 foot... 5.3 inches tall. For the period as a whole, while the Irish was 167.9, 5 foot 6.1 inches tall, the average height of male slaves and convicts in North America was 171 centimeters, 5 foot 7 inches tall. Okay, so they say colonial soldiers were a bit bigger here, and uh, back to here with the Dutch. The average height of 19 year old Dutch orphans in 1965 was 166 centimeters, 5 foot 3 inches, the Netherlands respective, 5 foot 5.6, 5 foot 1.7 inch, okay, so look, anybody bigger than that would be of unusual height, and they have problems explaining that, so they don't like that, okay, they don't like a lot of things, okay, and Rupert Sheldrake just so happened and when he wrote his book, The um, Science Delusion, you get the note, uh, delusion, okay, these people are sick, okay, like the people who make negative comments on my channel, my buddy's channels, okay, sick, all right, they're delusional, okay, because Rupert Sheldrake went to the expert um, physicist on gravity because he read some data, he was going back in through the 20th century and reading some data, and he found that the constant gravity, the, uh, you know, empirical constant of gravity somehow changed in the early part of the 20th century. So he went to the head scientist in Britain over there, and he said, hey, I was reading all of this stuff here, this data here, and your constant gravity here apparently changed in the in the early 20th century, what do you got to say about that? And the guy said, well, oh dear, you discovered our nasty little secret, okay? So you have gravity changing, folks, okay? According to their own data, mainstream data, and then it was banned on TED. It wasn't banned on YouTube yet, but it's banned on TED, because see, they don't like that. Even though the guy is reading mainstream data and found mainstream data, we don't like it still, Okay? You can't say that because science is great and whatever they say, I'm going to follow because I'm a robot and I'm a sheeple and whatever they say, even if it's theoretical, I'm going to take it as fact. And then I'm going to get on YouTube and make stupid comments on people's videos and channels because I'm an idiot, okay? Uh, you know, with the IQ as big as my shoe size. And even if you're a giant, it's pretty low. Okay, back to this. Off. Okay, so it was the bones were lost again in this modern to 21st century. We're still losing stuff for some reason. We, you know, you know, you know about you and your parking ticket or whatever. They're gonna waste vast resources of money because you didn't pay your twenty dollar parking ticket. But hey, 
you know, all the giant stuff and bones or whatever, just lose that stuff, you know, nobody cares. All right, going too far here. All right, read searches for the Science Channel. Stone moved on to the story in early 2014 and began contacting scientists and researchers in Georgia that had been connected to the original discovery. It was then decided that they would send a film crew to meet with members of the original team there and hopefully travel with them back to the site of the find. The intention was for these persons to gain permits and carry out a full excavation that could be filmed and that any more bones found then could be tested. A three-man team was dispatched from the UK to carry out the filming, but they were also joined by ancient mysteries researcher and author Bruce Benton, who writes articles for Ancient Origins all the time, who flew out from Ecuador to accompany them. Bruce was at the time deeply involved with the research of the so-called Lost City of Giants discovered in the Ecuadorian jungle in 2012. It was his giant-related research and existing experience of exploring sites in extreme territory that led to his being brought along. Okay. Once the team arrived on the edge of the park, the heaviest technical equipment was loaded onto horses while the team's members each carried their own kit on their backs, and so began the grueling hike. They would have to travel some 20 kilometers on foot through the dense forest mountain pass and even in the ice-cold river for several kilometers to reach the destination. It should be mentioned that these forests are home to bears, wolves, wildcats, and at times armed poachers. <coughs> Excuse me. Just like me living up there in a the forest in the northeast here with the... Uh, 